come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise unto him with songs of praises. Good morning and welcome to First Metropolitan Baptist Church Sunday worship service. We'd like to thank you for joining us online to share in this worship experience. Here at First Metropolitan Baptist Church, we believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Today, as we hear a word from heaven from our very own Associate Minister, Rev. Dr. Charles Cotterman, we pray that the message you receive will not only strengthen your faith, but comfort and keep you over the coming days. As the cases of COVID-19 continue to rise, we encourage you to continue wearing your mask, wash your hands frequently, sanitize often, and follow CDC guidelines on social distancing. But most importantly, please pray for each other. Once it is safe to do so, we invite you to come share with us here at First Metropolitan Baptist Church, located at 3719 Bel Air Road, to join us for our Sunday worship service. We have Sunday school beginning each Sunday morning at 9.30 and classes for all ages. Our worship service begins at 11 a.m. Once again, we'd like to thank you for joining us online and sharing in this worship experience. Please have a wonderful and blessed week. Thank you. Let us at this time prepare our hearts and minds for our morning prayer. Let us go to God in prayer. Oh God, our Father and Creator, our Rock and our Redeemer. We continue to praise you for your marvelous deeds in our lives. We praise your praise will continually be in our mouth. We come this morning, Lord, like empty pitchers before a full fountain to worship you and to proclaim you. We thank you, oh God, for the many things that you've done in our life. So we thank you this morning for the clothes that are on our back. We thank you for being able to walk around and have the use of our limbs. We thank you, oh God, for continuing to keep us strong and mighty in the time of this pandemic. Oh God, we just give you thanks that you continue to wrap your arms of love around us and keep us and so, God, as we come this morning, we ask that you forgive us of our sins. Forgive us for the things that we do wrong. And then, God, we ask that you bind us together in love. And build us up everywhere we're torn down and strengthen us where we are weak. We thank you, Lord, that you bless us in flesh, that one day you came as the only begotten son and that you came and lived among us for 33 years and then oh God you died that each one of us might have a right to tree of life so we just pray this morning for those that do not know you and the partner of their sin that they would just give their life over to you at this time oh God that you would truly bless them and keep them this prayer we ask in Jesus name Amen. Uh. 
Let us now, at this time, turn our attention to the reading of God's word. Our scripture for today comes from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the seventh chapter, and I shall be reading for you verses 36 through 50. 36 to the 50th verse. Luke 7, beginning with the 36th verse. And one of the Pharisees desired him that desired him that he would eat with them. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster jar of ointment and stood at the feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. And when the Pharisees which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, this man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner a woman this is that touched him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. And there was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both, telling them, therefore, which of them will love me, him more? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave much. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou, thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs on her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, this woman since, she, since the time I came in has not ceased to kiss my feet, my head, with all thou didst not anoint. But this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sin, which are many, are forgiven, for she loves much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith save thee. Go in peace. Thus ended the reading of God's holy word. Just for a little while this morning, I want to lift up the theme Abundant living, the abundant life. Abundant living. And just for a brief text, we again want to look at, well, we want to look at the book of John, the 10th chapter, and the part B of the 10th verse. And it says, I am come that thy might have life and that thy might have it more abundantly. 
I'm come that they might have life and that they may have life more abundantly. Abundant living. This morning, I only want to take a few minutes to talk about an incident in Jesus' life. Perhaps it will give you some clues to how we or you ought to live your life. Let me say first that this incident in the life of Jesus emphasizes the attitudes of one's life, the attitude of how we approach life, approach living. The question is, do you operate from the attitude of abundance or an attitude of scarcity? Some people approach life with the attitude that begins by saying, there is not enough. There is not enough money. There is not enough love. There is not enough of anything. They begin life with both fists clenched. They feel that they must grasp and hold on to and hoard things of life. Now, on the other hand, there are people who go through life with the attitude that there is more than enough of everything. There is more than enough of money. There is more than enough love. There is more than enough forgiveness. There is more than enough of everything with the basic attitude of life. These people are always given with an open heart. They give with open hearts. Some people live their life on these two principles. The principle of scarcity. On the assumption that there is not enough. They are tight with their money. They are tight with their time, their love, and their patience. But others live on the principle of abundancy. And they are open with their pocketbooks, with their calendar, with their hearts. They are so much more giving. This is the attitude by which Jesus lived his life and taught others about life. The abundancy of living. He summarized his ministry in this statement. I am come that they might have life and that they might have life more abundantly. So the principles of abundancy and scarcity are two competing attitudes towards life. Again, this is not the answer to everything, but perhaps it is a good way to look at our attitude towards life. And how close our life come to the teaching of Jesus about the more abundant life. Now the incident, the incident that we are concerned about this morning happened at the home of a Pharisee who had invited Jesus to lunch. This is a case study which set these two principles in stark contrast. Again, the setting was at the home of Simon, a well-known Pharisee. Presumably, all was going well with the meal until the intrusion of a woman of the city. Luke, the writer, says that this uh, woman was a sinner. And that was a polite way of saying that this woman was a prostitute. Now the question was, how did she get into Simon's home? It was the custom to open the door to one's home when one had 
a distinguished guest, especially if he was a rabbi, and to allow one's neighbors and ta uh, fellow townspeople to hear what the dignitary had to say. The woman in question was probably not the only vill villager standing around the wall straining to hear bits and pieces of the conversation emanating from the table. We don't know why she did what she did. What happened was completely unpremeditated. Maybe it was something Jesus said. I have not come for the righteous, but for sinners, even sinners to repentance. Suddenly, with no warning, she burst into tears. And her tears fell upon Jesus' feet. Undoubtedly, she was embarrassed by the uncontrollable outbursts. Quickly, she dropped to her knees and began to wipe his feet with the only thing available, her long, unbraided, flowing hair. Then when the tears stopped, she regained her composure. and She did something that had nothing whatsoever to do with being embarrassed over the spectacle she had made of herself. She leaned over, kissed his feet, and opened an alabaster box of expensive perfume and poured it over his feet. While this powerful scene unfolded, no one in the room said a word. Simon was silent, and, and, and he thought, isn't this interesting? What will this Jesus of Nazareth do now? She is a prostitute. If Jesus is a prophet, he would have known what kind of woman this was. And he would not have permitted her to even touch his feet. Simon said nothing, but just sat there looking smugly at Jesus, who in return, the gaze knowing well that this Pharisee was thinking, knew too well what Simon was thinking. Then the people looked around and everybody looked around and, and they know now it was Jesus' move. Everyone knew the, what would Jesus do. Before Jesus, Simon could speak. Jesus said, let me tell you a story. Simon, a certain creditor, had two debtors. One owed him $500 and the other owed him $50. When they could not pay, he forgave them both. Now, which of them loved him more, Simon? Simon couldn't make connection and thought perhaps it was a trick question. So he answered cautiously, the one I suppose who he forgave the most. That's right, Jesus said. Simon, you have answered well. This parable explains why Simon, uh, this woman did what she did. You see a person, a person a person who has been given, forgiven much, who have received a lot of love and grace and mercy, will acknowledge their need for grace, will respond in the same manner. On the other hand, people who have refused to acknowledge their need of grace and mercy insist like the Pharisee on their own righteousness, refusing all efforts to reach them in love and forgiveness and are tight-fisted and less forgiving. Simon, this woman has been given much. 
That is why she expressed herself in such an abundance of anointing, my feet with oil. But you, Simon, you're cheap. Simon, you wouldn't even put a drop, a, a little bitty drop of ointment on my forehead. You are so tight with your affection that you could not bring yourself to place even a kiss of peace on my cheek. You are so protected of your reputation that you could not take the chance that someone might think you approved of me. Simon, you have a spiritual problem. A spiritual problem that expresses itself in everything you do. From the way you greet your guests at your door to the way you think about prostitutes. You don't know anything about grace. Simon, you have not received grace. You, so you are not gracious. What an incredible insight. Who would have thought to make a connection between Simon's lack of common courtesy and the fact that he never experienced love and grace and forgiveness? Who would have thought that the state of his spiritual life could find such a practical, ordinary expression? I think the spirit of Jesus would reveal to us today that we can have the more abundant life. There is more than enough love. Jesus would say to us, you aren't going to run out. You don't need to portion it out. A little here, a little there. Give to this one and withhold from this one. Your account of love does not decrease when you take some out. Interest compounds every time you make a withdrawal. There is more than enough out there. You don't have to compete for it, win it, or earn it, be jealous of those who have it, or hoard it when you get it. There is more than enough mercy in you. More than enough grace. You need not to be stingy with your forgiveness. You can afford to be lavish. There is more than enough mercy out there and grace with God and with God's people. You need not to punish yourself for your sin or work to earn approval. For well, where sin abounds, where sin abounds, grace abounds even more. You see, Simon, it is a circular process that Jesus has des described. And you find this in the sixth, in Luke's the sixth chapter and the 38th verse. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measures pressed down. Shaken together, running over, will be put in your lap. King James Version said, will be put in your bosom. But the process began in receiving, receiving in abundance, and you will live abundantly. So the gospel began by proclaiming that there, there is a wideness in the God's mercy, like the wideness of a sea one of our great hymns. It is not our task to make ourselves or to make God love us. It is ours only to let ourselves be loved and forgiven and thereby acknowledge the well, wells of grace and goodness within ourselves to be open. So this morning I said, may the abundance of God's grace be reflected in the abundancy of your life. May the scripture be fulfilled that says, freely you have received, freely give. Yes, I am come that you might have life 
and that you might have life more abundantly. Oh yes, the thief come only to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I come that you may have life and that you may have the fullness therein. Let us pray. Now, Lord, open our eyes that we might see how much we have to give. For the more we give, the more we live. And the more we live for him, the more we receive from him. Thank you, God, for being so loving, gracious, and merciful unto us. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord to make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance unto you. To give you his peace, joy, and happiness, yea, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>